Hi, I'm Jade Hernandez, a camouflage tattoo artist and educator. I help beauty bosses effectively market their business and become the authority in their field, close more leads and make more money. In the past six years, I've launched two successful beauty businesses to multiple six figures with over a hundred five-star raving reviews and several media press spotlights. While most marketers will tell you to hustle and work harder for success, I'll show you how to create more value from the inside out so that you work less, make more, and truly expand and transform your business and life. This is the Beauty Expanded Podcast. Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the top five questions you should be asking yourself before you invest in a career in paramedical tattooing. I'm here to be fully transparent with you and then obviously support you in making this huge decision. As so many of you are stepping into an entirely new field all on your own for the first time ever, which is really exciting, but can also be a bit scary, especially if you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. There's so much information on the internet these days, which can feel very overwhelming. You don't know who to train with, what to train for, how much people are charging for these services, and how you can actually make a profitable and fulfilling business in the world of paramedical tattooing. My name is Jade, and I have been in the paramedical field specializing in scar and stretch mark camouflage and even hair loss and areola nipple tattooing for the past six years. I have started from ground zero with zero clients and in a market where no one knew what the heck camouflage tattooing was. Now, looking back, I can let you know that everything has been truly worth it. This is one of the most rewarding businesses I have ever created for myself. And from a bird's eye view, I'm going to share with you the top five things that I think are the most important to ask yourself and to reflect upon before you invest in this career. So first things first, number one, are you comfortable with nudity and touching people? As obvious as that sounds, this is a very important detail to ask yourself. I've noticed through our training programs, some of the students that we train come from corporate America. They're not used to touching people and literally being exposed to nudity. And so one thing I notice is when they start training with us, they're a little uncomfortable touching people in fear of hurting them. And in order to truly tattoo effectively, especially when we're working on compromised tissue and we're working most likely all over the body, there's going to be different depths, texture, elasticity. Skin comes in varying degrees of thickness. Some clients are very toned and strong and muscular and other clients are not. And so in order to effectively tattoo someone, you really need to make sure that the canvas that you're tattooing is as tight and smooth as possible for the most natural and effective results. If you don't like being in close proximity to people, if you don't like the idea of touching them, if you are uncomfortable with nudity, then this is something to seriously consider before you dive into this world. Because oftentimes when we're working on stretch marks and scars, which can be found all over the body, sometimes the breast, sometimes the butt, the inner thighs, legs, back, arms, means that there are going to be some clients who are completely exposed, topless, for example, when you tattoo them. And I took this for granted when I started because when I owned an airbrush tanning business before I got into the world of paramedical tattooing, I would see women day in and day out naked and fully exposed. And so I was always used to nudity. But I realized that not everyone felt that same way because they just didn't have the same experience or background that I did. And so I noticed with some of our students that they would feel a bit uncomfortable with nudity and also touching people around these private areas. And so if you're not comfortable touching people, obviously we're wearing gloves and keeping everyone safe and our environment as sterile as possible. But if you're not comfortable spreading that skin, no matter what part of the body you are touching, you're not going to be an effective tattoo artist. The second thing you have to ask yourself is, do you truly have a passion to help people? You must be a people person. This job requires intimacy and creating a safe space for people to be vulnerable, exposed physically and emotionally. Some of the scars that we work with 
come from trauma. And so being able to adapt to someone and being able to engage with them and to create that connection of trust is going to be very important. Do you have the ability to make people feel comfortable? This job, especially in the beginning, can require some long hours. Some of our sessions can last four to five hours in just one single session. And when people are getting tattooed, especially if it's a trauma site, a lot of emotions can come up. And so if you have a natural passion and drive to help people, it's going to make those sessions a lot more comfortable and second nature to you to really give them the space to feel seen, heard, in order for them to move forward. Being an entrepreneur, owning your own business is not always going to be an easy and instant success. You're going to face ups and downs. You're going to be challenged in ways that you've never thought of before. And so having that passion to help people will help carry that drive and that consistency when the days are tough. Having a passion to help people is gonna help you overcome those months that are slow. Having the passion to help people is going to help carry you far in this industry, especially when and if you make a mistake. Passion can absolutely take you far. But without that, it will be very easy to quit, not love what you do, and even regret getting into this industry in the first place. I know it sounds like common sense, but you'll be amazed in meeting people in this industry who are completely withdrawn and don't really like people. And I think that easily translates in the type of customer service and the way that they support their clients and the growth of their business. So you must be a people person. The third thing to consider is, are you coachable? Not one scar, skin tone, stretch mark, or skin type is ever the same. That's what I feel makes this business and this industry so interesting to me. I never get bored. I have yet to meet in six years that I've been doing this, the same exact skin type scar or even skin tone. Everyone is so unique. And I believe that the most empowering position that you can be in this business is always open to learning and growing. If you feel like everything is amazing and you've got everything down, I promise you, tattooing is one of the most humbling career paths you can take. Because just when you think you've got it, it will bring you back to your knees. Because everything we do has a permanency factor to it. In addition, we're always working on compromised, damaged tissue. And a lot of things can go wrong. There's a lot of risk in what we do. And so I think the most empowering place to be is to always know that there's more room to grow and for you to continue your education. Mistakes are not easily erased in this industry. Continuing your education, staying humble, knowing that there's always room to improve and grow is the best mindset for your business. Owning your own business is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And even after six years, I would never claim myself as a master of paramedical tattooing. Because again, I just believe that the most empowering place and mindset that you can have is to know that even though you produce really great results, doesn't ever guarantee that it will always be that way or that you'll get the same results for your next client. And with that being said, the fourth thing to ask yourself is, are you accountable? Can you be accountable? Are you comfortable with taking accountability? When something doesn't go right, do you easily blame someone else, give up, or take ownership in trying to figure out how you can mitigate that mistake from happening again or how you can prevent it from continuing or what you need to do to perfect your craft or to become a better artist? Every student that I train is so afraid of making a mistake. And while I admire that and I love that they are concerned about that, I always let them know that it's inevitable. What we're doing, we're humans. There's going to be human error in what we do. The canvas that we're working on isn't even perfect to begin with. Mistakes are going to happen. But what's more important is what you do after that mistake happens. That's what's going to be more valuable because there are a lot of artists in this industry, unfortunately, that when they make a mistake, I've heard that they've ghosted their clients, they've changed their numbers, they've blamed the client for not following post-care instructions, 
They've left clients hanging. And I think that hurts us all as an industry. And so can you be accountable? Can you take ownership when a mistake happens? Do you have support to know what to do to follow through and making sure that that patient and that client feels comfortable and knows what steps to take to solve the issue or to make it better or whatever the case may be? And so that to me is more important as an artist is who you are and the character in which you stand by after a mistake happens. What you resist persists. And so knowing that mistakes are going to be inevitable, I think the more empowering position to be is to really dig deep inside yourself and see where have you been accountable in your life, in your business? Do you take accountability or is it always someone else's fault? Because that's only going to take you so far in this industry. And it's not fair to leave a client who doesn't know this industry doesn't know exactly what we do. We're the experts. They are not. It's not fair for them to entrust their insecurities in you. And then for whatever reason, if things don't pan out, to be then left hanging or even worse, to throw shame, project guilt onto them and making them feel like they did something wrong. We are permanently altering people's bodies, hopefully for the better. We're dealing with people's most insecure parts of themselves. And it kind of goes back to, do you really enjoy people? Do you really have a passion to help people? Because knowing that mistakes are inevitable are going to be par for the course, it can either go into two directions. One, you pass the buck, or two, you learn from it. And those mistakes then shape you to be a better artist, more informed artist. And number five, are you willing to put yourself out there? One of the most interesting things that I've noticed training students is that a lot of them are stepping into the entrepreneurial space for the first time ever. And learning how to tattoo is an entirely different skill than learning how to grow a business in tattooing. It's kind of like just because you're a great chef doesn't guarantee that you'll know how to run a successful restaurant. And one of the biggest misconceptions in our industry due to people selling people the easy way out is that they're under the impression that if they just post on social media or get good on social media, that they'll be able to attract a ton of clients. And that simply isn't always the case. Yes, absolutely, it can happen. It is possible. But I would say it's very rare that one post or two posts a week is going to bring in a volume of clients. After you're done training, you then have to learn how to jumpstart your business. And a lot of that is going to be marketing and really establishing authority and expertism in the space of your industry. And so are you willing to really put yourself out there? I'll be honest, no one cares about your logo until you get to a place of Nike, for example, or Lululemon. But for most of us, we're not jumping into the space like that. I see a lot of people getting stuck on procrastination, and it's really a fear of not succeeding. It's really a fear of being judged by others. And the ones that are truly successful in this industry lead with passion, the pursuit to help people. And that helps them overcome the adversity and the challenges and the fear of other people's judgment. What will my family think of me? What will my friends think of me? What will my high school classmates think of me? That's a very, very real thing. And if you get into this industry thinking that one Instagram post is going to lead you 500 clients, you are going to be disappointed and surprised in the lack of leads that you actually get. This is an entirely different ball game. If you have a hard time doing videos, if you have a hard time selling yourself, those are things that you're going to have to overcome. It doesn't mean that you can't be successful in this industry. But I'm here to be really, really honest and transparent to you because I see this being one of the biggest hurdles of people getting out of their own way. And again, it goes back to why are you doing this? Is it truly to help people? And if it is, then your logo doesn't matter. Your website doesn't matter. You speaking up, you doing videos, you telling people what paramedical tattooing is and what it can do for people and educating them on this because more often than not, not a lot of people have heard of this. 
that is going to take your business far. Not caring what other people think because you're on this mission to help people heal and overcome their trauma and to feel confident and sexy again in their bodies is the long game. When I started my paramedical tattoo business, I had no option B. This was it. I had to make this work. And that's what fueled me and sustained me when it was slow in the beginning, when it was hard getting clients. And even to this day, when things are a bit slower, I just go back to why I got into this industry in the first place. And I think about all the lives that I've changed. And I look at our reviews and our clients who have said, you have completely changed my life. And that is what carries me through the lows of owning your business. And I will say, owning my own business, even with the challenges of the ups and downs, I would still choose day in and day out over being employed by a company. Entrepreneurship offers so much freedom and ownership and empowerment that the highs and the lows are worth it for me. And these are the things that you need to seriously consider for yourself because you're not going to make six figures in three days or three months. And that's what you're being sold. I hope those five questions really helped you. If you have listened this far, I'm going to offer you a bonus question to ask yourself, which is number six, do you have a servant heart? It's so important when we're working with people and they're entrusting us with their bodies and their biggest insecurities that we really create a safe space for them where they don't feel judged and they feel seen and understood. And more importantly, when people are getting tattooed, it's not always the most comfortable feeling for them to be in. When they're in your chair, everyone experiences discomfort differently. Some people really like to talk and be distracted. Others like to get into a Zen space and prefer silence. Others sleep because they don't feel a thing. And if you have a servant's heart, it's going to be much easier for you to support them in the way that they need to be supported. Not what you need to be supported as an artist, but in regards to how they need to be supported. This is super, super important. Being able to read the room and being able to respect what they need out of this session is going to up-level your business in a way that leads to those reviews and the space for them to heal and accept themselves further. It's those invisible elements that I think a lot of people either don't think about or disregard because they seem so simple. But it's one of those key things that have really made for our business to be successful. And having a servant heart to me also means that you respect people's time and their boundaries. As simple as it may seem to show up on time and to be prepared, again, sets your business on a higher level of standard that you provide for your clients and your brands that can really make or break someone's first impression when they step into your studio. We are here to help people feel better about themselves. We are here to help people feel respected. And those small, seemingly insignificant details actually make up for the bigger picture of what we're offering people. I hope this helped you. I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave me a comment on Instagram, Facebook, or comment below and let me know if this was helpful for you. And if you're watching this saying yes, yes, yes to all of these questions, you're already off to a great start in the world of paramedical tattooing. I promise you it is extremely rewarding, but it also comes with great responsibility. And I'm so excited to meet you because artists like you really do change the world. And so until next time, bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love to connect and help you more. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer, please send it to jade at studioconceal.com. That's J-A-Y-D at studioconceal.com. And I might highlight it on my podcast. I find what's often personal is most general. So if this episode helped you, please share it with a friend who may need the encouragement and inspiration. I'll catch you on the next one.